The beholder deactivates the light picture and wills his servants to carry him back to the first gallery. There, bathed in the shadowless glow of the fireball, stands a huge globe of silvery metal. At his approach, it radiates an eerie phosphorescent light and symbols appear upon its surface. The law stones entered the shadow gate some moments before you fell. Is that not so? asked the beholder incisively. You confirm this to be the case and watch with fascination as the symbols shift and change color. There are many channels within the shadow gate that are warped by the vagaries of time and space. Usually it is an impossible task to predict where an object passing through to the Dacian will materialize, but the coordinates of your arrival are known, and this will help my calculations. Slowly the symbols begin to disappear until just three remain. Without knowing the precise aeon time they enter, the shadow gates one the shadow gate I can find only an approximate location. Ah, okay. They enter the shadow gate without oh, that's because there should, there should be more commas. Where are all the commas? Without knowing the precise A and time, they were they lost, they, they the were lost when they entered the the, the shadow gate. Without knowing, without knowing the precise A and time they entered the shadow gate, I can only find an approximate location. See, there's no comma between shadow gate and I, so I got confused when I read it. He yeah. says, scrutinizing the symbols. Do you think he can locate the comma? Or give us an approximate location? That would be nice. As reckoned by the time scale of your planet, the law stones arrived on the Dacian 41 hours ago. Wait, what? Time is different here. I thought that will be set up on those dragons for a damn long time. Hmm. So while we were snoozing, these things have, well, probably been found by now. Yeah. They materialized together and intact in the forest of the Catrisic of Wasada, a realm situated between the elemental strongholds of earth and water. This bodes well for you human. Wasada is a temperate and stable domain rich in those elements necessary to sustain mortal life forms. Also, there's one of great wisdom who has made that this her home. Her name is Siroka. It would be wise to seek her help in finding these stones of power, for she is sure to know their whereabouts. Okay, what did you say the place was called? The place was called Wosada, with a C. A set, I mean. Zada? Uh... And what was the name of the person that could help us? Siraka with two C's. Although I am so sorry to interrupt, but I have to go to the bathroom, so can we take a break? Bathroom okay. break for the Danish Kylord. Be right back. We're back! Although his words revive your flagging hope after you come back from your toilet break, you are still fearful that the law stones are beyond your recovery. The Beholder senses your apprehension and tries to allay your fears by offering you a means of transportation to the realm of Wasada. He promises that your passage will be swift, but when you learn what the journey entails, your blood runs cold. And it entails what? This device, says the Beholder, pointing with pride at the huge fiery vessel that dominates the gallery. It's a dimension door. It will enable you to pass directly into the realm of Wasada through a rent in the fabric of the Dacian. You stare in awe at the sun-like ball trapped within the vessel and try to comprehend the secret sorceries that enable such a thing to exist. You will come to learn that the laws which govern my world are quite unlike those which shape Aeon. Here, time and space can be manipulated by those with power enough to craft them to their needs, he says in answer to your thoughts. He wills his servants to carry him to another globe which stands close by. There he manipulates a bank of crystals and gradually a swirling circle of grey shadow forms on the glossy surface of the vessel. It's shameless and you find that you cannot fully focus your eyes on it. Step forward and enter, commands the beholder. The door to Wasada is open. Your skin prickles and your stomach churns, but you fight to control your fear by relying solely on your kai skills. You sense that the beholder is speaking the truth. The Great Portal does lead to the realm of Wasada. And so, with great trepidation, you bid him farewell and step into the void. At the very moment you enter the Dimension Door, a sensation of incredible speed assails you. A twirling smile of light unfolds before your eyes, and you hurtle towards its core, borne along in an envelope of grey cloud. You close your eyes, but the light penetrates your eyelids, growing ever brighter. 
It fills your head with a madness of calls and forces a silent scream of anguish from your lips. You lose three endurance points. Yeah. I wonder if this is sort of like, you know, when Harry Potter uses that, what was it called, spell that makes him teleport all over the place. Yeah, well, more, yeah, okay, maybe kind of like that, especially when they leave parts of themselves behind. In other words, it is sort of going a little crazy at the moment. Yeah. So, a sudden lack of air leaves you gasping for breath, but it passes in an instant, and when you blink open your eyes, you discover that your journey is complete. You have arrived in Wasanda, and to a great relief, your ass followed suit. It's also here. Good. I kind of needed that. Where's my bottom? I can't find my bottom! Oh, With, over there. From the brow of a grassy hill, you stare across a strange yet familiar landscape. Before you lies an expanse of verdant grassland with clumps of woodlands and several winding streams. The warm air smells fresh and clean, and the distant sound of birdsong is carried mm. to you on the gentle breeze. Were it not for the grey sunless skies above, it would be easy to believe that you had been returned to your home world. A sudden wave of homesickness makes you feel heavy hearted, but you refuse to allow it to weaken your resolve. Instead, you scan the horizon in the hopes of discovering some form of habitation. Do you wish to use hunt mastery? Yes. yes. Using your Kai skills, you focus your telescopic vision on the far horizon and see a group of shapes that resemble small pyramids of stone. However, you are too far away to be able to tell if the structures are inhabited. A nearby stream meanders in the direction of the distant shapes and you decide to follow its course in the hope that it will lead you to them. The stream wends its, w wends its way sluggishly through a mossy glen to a thicket of red-leaved trees, which stands in a semicircle around a pale grey metallic monolith. So we to investigate this strange monolith, or just to avoid it? Mm, Let's investigate it. Yeah, right, we have but... to find Sarah or whatever her name was. The base of the monolith is overgrown with weeds and wildflowers, indicating that it has stood here for some considerable time. Yet its metallic surface bears no obvious signs of weathering. It is tipped with a transparent spike, which resembles a short glass sphere. You can hear a faint humming sound when you place your ear to its mirror smooth, mirror smooth spire. The sound seems to originate somewhere deep below the ground. Do you wish to use pathmanship? Yeah, this yeah. sounds a little high-tech, uh, high-sorcery thing. Your Kai's skill alerts you to the possibility of an ambush. A group of hostile creatures are approaching the thicket, drawn by the sound of an alarm inaudible to human ears, which you set off by touching the monolith. Do you wish to evade these creatures, or to stay and confront them? Uh, evade, evade. I say evasive action. Indeed. Yeah, the narrator even tells us that they're hostile. Quickly, you try to retrace your route to the stream, but you soon come to an abrupt halt. A group of hairy, squat-limbed creatures is moving through the undergrowth towards you. They are armed with crude spears, which they carry at the ready, like hunters stalking the prey. Do you wish to use the bow? Do you wish to take cover in the undergrowth and wait for them to pass? Or do you wish to evade them by returning to the monolith? I say we try and evade it by hiding in the undergrowth. Mm -hmm. You hide beneath the leafy canopy of a flowering bush and wait in silence for the creatures to pass. Through a chink in the leaves, you watch as two of them approach, sniffing the air with their ape-like noses as they are trying to detect your scents. Give an ear, roll the die. Eight. The if we sneeze now, we are dead. The creature latch onto your scent and emit a strange high-pitched twittering sound which alerts the others to your hiding place. You leap to your feet, unsheathing a weapon. But before you have a chance to evade them, they surround you and attack. You are fighting a Uko. Or Uko, I should probably say. Uko. Yeah. And your combat skill is 33, right? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. By the way, it was good you asked because I had to remove the whole uh, thing we had the last time. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for that. Okay, good day. Robert I. Yeah, fine. Okay. The Uko stabs at you with its crude spear, but, well, it's a crude spear. It doesn't really go through chainmail. You lose one uh, endurance points. You show them what a real weapon can do. And what they can do is fuck things up pretty bad. Oh, dear. Roll again. Eight. The Uko screeches from pain and tries to hold a hand to its bleeding main face. You use this moment to bisect it. 
Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, not just one. You use it to just complete it by six. Everyone! Quickly, you search. Oh, dear! What, 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 they're just standing in a circle and he just decided to use some kind of twirling attack or something like that and then just whoosh, bisect them all? Yeah, I thought you were fighting one, but no, you're fighting the whole pack and you just went, oh, shunk. Now they're all dead from two hits. So, sort of more overkill than a Sith Lord on his best day. Quickly, you search for bodies of your vanquished enemies. You discover the following items which could be useful. There's six spears, two swords, an axe, three meals, and a conch shell. A conch shell? A conch shell. Well, I Okay, I was about to say I have no idea what that actually is, but... So, do you wish to keep anything of that? Let me see, what was it again? It was something... Six, what, what was it? Spears? The... Yep. Two swords and an axe. And three meals. And a conch shell. Well, the weapons I think we can do without. Although the spears... No, they're just going to be more throwing weapons. I already have a good weapon that launches... Well, deadly projectiles. So I cannot really see anything useful in this pack. You guys? I agree. Um. All right, so we're just going to leave this pile of bloody corpses here, or can we at least shove them into the bushes or something like that so no one discovers them? Mm -hmm. You are eager to put a good distance between yourself and the monolith, so you decide to run beside the stream for as long as your legs will allow. Time passes rapidly, although the terrain changes very little until you reach a line of low hills spread out before you like a sleeping colossus. Here, a path ascends from the bank of the stream to the crest of the hill, and you follow it. On reaching the crest, you stare down at a remarkable and daunting sight. A walled city of low pyramid-shaped dwellings lies spread along the center of a narrow wooded valley. Near the middle, rising high above the other buildings, stands a citadel, its color identical to the drab gray of the sky. Admiringly, you observe the intricate carvings which adorn its surface, but your enthusiasm is soon dampened when you see that the streets are teeming with the creatures you encountered at the monolith. You turn to leave, but a strange compulsion draws your eyes back to the citadel. It is your sixth Kai, it is your Kai sixth sense, and is telling you that Seraka, the one who can aid you in your search for the Lord Stones, reside here in this tower of stone. The path leads down to an open gate in the city wall where two of its ape-like inhabitants stand guard. Do you wish to approach the city gate, or would you rather search for an unguarded entrance to the city? Uh, Let's just approach. approach! Well, we just fought some of them, so... I prefer to find an unguarded entrance, if it's if at all possible. If there, uh, yeah. if there isn't one, then we can just try yeah. to approach. Rana, you have a tiebreaker. Well, if we were to just venture towards the gates, yeah, I do not know. These guys do not maybe seem so bright, but they still prove that their instincts are good. So, yeah, maybe we should go for something unguarded. Even though I just feel like going booga 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 and then just scare the piss out of them. But yeah, I say we find something unguarded. Hmm. You hurry towards the woods that line the valley, hoping the trees will hide you from the watchful eyes of the guards as you skirt the city wall. But your presence has already been noted by a lookout stationed high in the Great Tower, who saw you standing at the top of the hill. He has sent word to the gate guards to prepare a special patrol. Huh. And there's a picture of this special patrol. 